La media hora más innovadora inicia en sus pantallas. Más ciencia, más tecnología y más innovación al alcance de todos. Gracias por estar allí. Como siempre, los invito a que nos escriban a través del Twitter en arroba Atomuntelesur y en Facebook nos encuentran por Atomuntelesur. Allí pueden subir, comentar y compartir todos sus contenidos relacionados a la ciencia y a la tecnología que aquí nos interesan. Empezamos indagando en los misterios del universo y lo que acontece fuera de órbita. El satélite ruso Cosmos 1400, lanzado a la atmósfera en 1982 e inoperativo hace más allá de una década, cayó en la superficie de la Tierra el pasado 14 de septiembre. Este hecho evidencia la necesidad de poner atención a la basura espacial. The satellite Cosmos 1400 was specifically designed for electronic intelligence and reconnaissance signals. This spacecraft was launched from Plesek in the Soviet Union in 1982. It replaced the previous satellite Cosmos 1315 and was operational until over a decade ago. Since then it has remained in space. However, the American space surveillance system Interfax predicted that due to the device's disintegration and our planet's gravitational pull, the now non-operational satellite would fall to Earth. And before long, it did just that. The device fell to Earth last Sunday, the 14th of September, 2014, at 0404 Greenwich Mean Time. Due to their high velocity, some of its parts caught fire entering the planet's ozone layer, with only a few fragments reaching the ground. Space debris is an issue of concern and will undoubtedly become increasingly important. Although the fragments are small, they pose a threat to future missions due to their high velocity. Space debris has also endangered crew members of the International Space Station. Although the debris was 250 miles away, the six astronauts on board were forced to make an emergency evacuation and take refuge in two ships docked to the main station. In 2003, there was an estimated 10,000 objects classified as space debris. Today, however, the number of objects larger than one centimeter orbiting the Earth is estimated at 50,000. ¿Sabían que Brasil tiene el programa espacial más avanzado de América Latina, que es además el mayor productor de jets para la aviación regional y que incluso su sistema de automatización bancaria es el más avanzado del mundo? Bueno, estos son solo algunos datos que evidencian el avance vertiginoso de este país suramericano en el campo científico, tecnológico y refuerzan su posición como potencia emergente. Veamos más. When it comes to technical advances in bioenergy, oil extraction and aeronautics, it is impossible to leave out Brazil, a key innovator. The country maintains a steady growth rate, which has put it on par with emerging powers like China and India. For example, its universities are beginning to enter the world rankings. In 2011, the government announced the creation of technical schools and 75,000 scholarships to the world's finest universities, making clear that research and technical transfer will be a requisite for any international agreement. During the 2014 World Cup, the South American giant confirmed its potential in sports technologies, never before used in sporting events of this magnitude. Ultra HD cameras and state-of-the-art devices were employed in stadiums. Currently, there are plans for building the country's first nuclear submarine.
De acuerdo con datos del mes de junio divulgados por la Agencia Nacional de Telecomunicaciones Anatel, en el gigante suramericano el Internet de banda larga fija está presente en el 35% de los hogares y cuenta con un total de 23,22 millones de suscriptores. Revisemos los detalles. Brazil's investment in broadband infrastructure aimed to democratize the country's internet services, especially in underserved regions. As President Dilma Rousseff said when she launched her re-election campaign, this is one of the government's priorities for the coming years. According to the Ministry of Communications, campaigns are being carried out on several fronts to widen these services. We acabamos de fazer uma licitação para o GSAC. Né, que é, o, é, é um sistema que, por via terrestre para as escolas urbanas e por via, via satelital, satélite para as escolas rurais. Work has been done on managing the terminals and access networks, expanding the fiber optic network and launching new satellites. O governo também decidiu que esse satélite deveria ter dois propósitos: um na área de comunicações estratégicas e um outro na área de. É, é, banda larga de internet de banda larga para toda a população brasileira que é a chamada inclusão digital então o Brasil é um país muito grande tem regiões que são remotas e que não tem cobertura de outra forma então tem que ter seus próprios satélites Among other initiatives are the so-called digital cities which offer free public internet access Young people from rural areas are also being trained to use information and communications technology. É, na verdade, a gente lá do interior do Paraná veio aqui em busca de levar essas novas dialéticas para lá. Although the impact of these technologies in everyday life is increasing, more steps need to be taken and other alternatives need to be found in order to make such opportunities available to everyone. Y si se perdieron nuestra edición de Atomon de alguna semana o simplemente desean volverla a ver, lo pueden hacer a través de nuestra página www.telesurtv.net, hacen clic en videos, entran y posteriormente hacen clic en programas. Allí bajan con el cursor se ubican en seleccionar programa y por orden alfabético encuentran Atomon. Allí lo están viendo en pantalla. Al entrar pueden ver todas nuestras ediciones pasadas y por supuesto escoger la que deseen. Y así llegamos al final de esta edición. Como siempre en pantalla nuestra dirección arroba Atomon Telesur y mi cuenta arroba Dani Telesur. Recuerden, aprovechemos nosotros a la tecnología, que no sea ella la que nos aprovecha a nosotros. Los espero la próxima semana.